Το ταξίδι για την αναζήτηση βέλτιστων των τεχνικών καλλιέργεια τη ελιά μα οδήγησε στη σκάλα Λακουνία, σε μια φάρμα όπου τα ελαιόδεντρα μεγαλώνουν με βάση τι αρχέ τη αναγεννησιακή γεωργία και τη αγροδεσοπονία. Επισκεπτόμενοι τη φάρμα του Silver Leaf, είχαμε τη χαρά να μιλήσουμε με τον πάνω που διαχειρίζεται την εκμετάλλευση, να περπατήσουμε σε ένα χωράφι πλούσιο σε διάφορα είδη δέντρων και φυτών, αλλά και να συζητήσουμε διαδικτυακά με την Σάιλα και τον Τζουζέπε από τον οργανισμό Southern Lights για τις ευκαιρίες που κρύβει αυτό το σύστημα για τον Έλληνα υλοπαραγωγό. Η βιοπικιλότητα έχουμε γύρω στα 2 με 3 χρόνια και βλέπουμε ένα μεγάλο στρώμα ας πούμε, από θρηματισμένο ξύλο. Αυτό τώρα στα 10 χρόνια, καθώς θα μεγαλώνουν και πιο πολύ και θα θρηματίζουν πιο πολύ, θα κλαδεύουμε πιο έντονα ας πούμε, τα δέντρα και θα μεγαλώνουν, θα γίνει ένα τεράστιο στρώμα από από θρηματισμένη ύλη. Οπότε αυτό είναι ένα σφουγγάρι που θα, μας, θα χρειάζεται δηλαδή να ποτίζουμε πολύ λιγότερο από ό,τι ποτίζουμε τώρα. Πιο παλιά βάζαμε, βάζαμε φουσκή και το θρηματισμό που τον κάναμε ανέκαθεν. Δηλαδή το καταστροφέα τον δουλεύουμε εδώ και 25 χρόνια σίγουρα. Φουσκή, τι από πιο... Κοπρία ζωή, από ζωή. κατσίκια. Κατσίκια. Γιατί έχει ο πατέρας μου. Λοιπόν, αλλά... Τώρα με τη βιοπικιλότητα βλέπω το χώμα ότι έχει αλλάξει πάρα πολύ. Ενώ με το φουσκί δεν ήταν τόσο... Με... που έχουμε βιοπικιλότητα τώρα και θρηματίζουμε μεγαλύτερες ποσότητες, το χώμα έχει αλλάξει, είναι σαν να είμαι σε άλλο χωράφι τα τελευταία δύο χρόνια. Άρα θρηματίζεις όχι μόνο τα της ελιάς, τα κλαδιά, ό,τι... Τις μουριές, ε, τις ροδιές που τις κλαδεύουμε, τα λάιμ, όλα. Τα λάιμ βασικά τώρα φέτος θα τα κλαδέψουμε γιατί ήταν μικρά. Ναι, το, η βασική λύπανση τώρα ε, είναι με το που θρηματίζουμε με ο θρηματισμός. Δεν βάζουμε κάτι άλλο πρόσθετο και τίποτα. Και, και με τα αυτοφή που βλέπω εδώ έχει μεγάλη αυθονία. Ε, περνάς με χορτοκοπτικό καθόλου. Περνάμε, ναι, δύο-τρεις mm. φορές το χρόνο περνάμε. Τώρα δηλαδή, επόμενη, την επόμενη εβδομάδα θα περάσουμε με χορτοκοπτικό, ναι. Αλλά θέλουμε να αφήσουμε και τους ζωχούς ας πούμε, να σποριάσουν, οπότε είναι... Να συντηρηθεί ο να συντηρηθεί, ναι, 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 ναι. Οπότε πρέπει να πέφτουν και οι καινούργοι σπόροι. Είχαμε θρηματίσει ευκαλύπτους και στις γραμμές που είχα θρηματίσει τους ευκαλύπτους έβλεπες ε, δίπλα είχε, είχε χορτάρια, είχε, μάλλον δεν είχε, δεν είχε πολύ χορτάρι. Έβλεπες είχε αφιδατωθεί το χώμα, είχε σκάσει και κάτω στις γραμμές που είχα θρηματίσει ήταν λάσπη. Όταν λέμε λάσπη ήταν ναι, ήτανε έντονο, ήταν σοκ ας πούμε τότε που το αντίκρισε αυτό το πράγμα. Βλέπεις μικροοργανισμούς, βλέπεις σκουλίκια που πριν δεν υπήρχαν, οπότε φαίνεται εν μέρη. Ναι, βλέπεις δηλαδή ποια είναι τα, τα σκουλίκια που βοηθάνε το χώμα, οπότε ξέρεις, ένα, άμα πας στον γείτονα θα δεις ένα μουσκλι επάνω στο χώμα. Είναι το πρώτο δηλαδή, το πρώτο, πρώτη χλωρίδα που έρχεται πάνω στο έδαφος μετά από όταν δεν έχει τίποτα. Έχει διαφορά παραγωγή από χρονιά σε χρονιά στα δέντρα. Ναι, σίγουρα. σίγουρα. Αυτό εξαρτάται από τον καιρό, εξαρτάται από διάφορα. Δεν, είναι, δεν υπάρχει στάνταρ, α πούμε. Εντάξει, σίγουρα υπάρχουν και μερικέ φορέ, α πούμε, δάγκωση. Μπορεί να φτάσουν μερικέ φορέ να κάνουμε 300 κιλά που κάναμε 800, ξέρω mm -hmm. λάδι. Ναι, αυτό μερικέ χρονιέ. Γι' αυτό θέλουμε να το καλύψουμε με τη βιοποικιλότητα. Οπότε, να μην σε νοιάζει, κάτι θα, δεν θα πάει καλά, θα πάει κάτι άλλο. Hi Seila and Giuseppe, thanks for meeting with me today. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about regenerative farming and especially how you have implemented this in, in practice in your olive orchard? So um, our olive orchard has a very, very old um, Koronaiki olive trees. Uh, they are about 500 years old um, and since uh, 35 years, We have in between um, citrus trees, uh, mainly oranges, uh, limes and lemons. So since uh, many years, we have kind of tried out this uh, polyculture um, with very close uh, also distances between the trees. Um, since seven years, to be precise, our farm is in a transition to an agroforestry or actually the transition is completed because the additional trees we have uh, in the farm uh, are already taller <laughs> than our citrus trees. Um, so our farm basically transitioned uh, through a natural process by itself. We have approximately between uh, every citrus tree, we have either a mulberry tree or a fig tree, which allows uh, for heavy pruning to, to support our 
uh, main crop trees um, with organic matter and other benefits. Sounds great. And I know that you and your organization, so the Northern Lights, are trying to, to find some other farmers in Greece as well to, to implement the system. Or have you tried this? What results have you already seen? Actually, it's not really difficult to find other farmers who want to transition as we can see uh, since we started the regenerative farming support program we literally have been flooded by requests from farmers to transition we transitioned last year we created uh, two more pilot farms with olive trees uh, that uh, that follow regenerative uh, farming principles maybe Giuseppe you could give an overview about the practices okay starting with what is uh, regenerative farming uh, it's an approach that combines the need of a farmer to get uh, products which can be sold or can be for uh, self-sustaining um, with the need of the ecosystem to grow more and more complex, more and more rich, and so to regenerate the ecosystem in which the farm operation is taking place. There isn't a specific a set of techniques that you always use, as somebody could think, like, I don't know, biodynamic farming or other kind of uh, techniques, while uh, regenerative farming is more of a goal than a technique. We use many techniques. Some of them uh, are very common in um, organic farming. Uh, some of them, they, they might sound kind of weird to a farmer. We, we try to decide which technique is more appropriate in a specific context, which can be environmental context, climatic context, and social economical context. So you will see different techniques and different setups uh, according to the specific situation that we can face. Can you, Giuseppe, give us some examples about uh, concerning these techniques uh, that a farmer in uh, an olive grower uh, could implement to start uh, this transition to a regenerative farming system? So one of our main goals is uh, to rebuild the organic matter content uh, of the land, of the soil. This, for example, might sound weird, but we would interplant uh, many uh, species, the main purpose of uh, be pruned very heavily and therefore like the branches would be shredded and, and they would build up uh, organic matter. Same for herbaceous plants that are uh, called green manure. So we would seed, for example, mixes of um, grass species such as oats or barley uh, for fodder that, that we would mow. Uh, same for fava beans and for alfalfa and other leguminous plants. For, and then also tap-rooted plants such as mustard or mallow or yeah, whatever plant has a very strong carrot-like root that uh, breaks the soil up and uh, kind of injects some organic matter deep in the soil. The second practice that I described, of course, is much more common, even in, uh, let's say, organic farming. The first one uh, would sound very weird, you know, to plant, for example, a eucalyptus in between two olive trees, or three eucalyptus, or five eucalyptus every uh, two olive trees. And, and then we would prune them very heavily, keeping them as, as a pole uh, with uh, just a bunch of branches on the top, and then we would thin them out so that we have the right amount of shade, but uh, you know, we will increase the organic matter content. But at the same time, we would describe and suggest to farmers some input that they can use, such as compost. Farmers can, can apply and, and can uh, make their own uh, with uh, just leftovers from other crops. So, they can use, for example, the branches of the olives, the leaves of the olives, and mix them up with manure or with uh, straw or with wood chip, uh, and then obtain a compost which is aerobic and with an important focus on the microbiology that it develops. Um, and then also we would suggest very often biofertilizers, which are fermentation of manure and or plants with minerals such as uh, ashes, and uh, rock dust and these kind of things. 
we, we want a complex ecosystem. We don't want a complicated system. We try to keep it easy, I mean, and manageable, but at the same time, we try to use all the potential of the ecosystem uh, to, you know, to, to self-balance and to regenerate uh, as fast as possible with the correct practices. Perfect. So less monoculture, more diversity for a better ecosystem stability. And not diversity for diversity, if I can just specify this. We, we want functional diversity, which means we don't introduce species, you know, random species, just to make it more biodiverse. But we look for the functions. It's like, you know, when you build a house, you don't want 3,000 uh, electricians. You, you want one electrician, but also one builder, one architect. Sometimes the same person can, or the same plant, or the same practice can have three functions, two functions. So we try to cover all the, all the ecosystemics functions. Maybe I can share an example um, about this on that. Um, this year in Greece, um, especially in my region in South Peloponnese, uh, in Scala, we had uh, heat waves one after the other. Um, so farmers had to irrigate a lot of their land. It was a big problem this year, the irrigation, because you could see it, you were pumping not just water, but also sand and silt. It was really uh, scary for many farmers. And they were fighting actually of, about the right who could uh, irrigate first. And I also saw it a few years back when uh, in the middle of August for three weeks, I didn't irrigate my citrus trees at all. And they were... Uh, showing no signs of, of being thirsty, which is because of the good soil and because of the high organic matter content that I have on my ground. There is a, a nice number to remember that um, every 1% of uh, organic matter increase in your soil can hold 168,000 liters uh, of water per hectare. So it, it literally means you have a, a sponge, a water sponge uh, on your land that is storing their water for times of drought. So I think also in the face of uh, more droughts and more unpredictable weather, it's even uh, more urgent uh, to convert to, to more natural uh, ways of farming. And another um, detail I wanted to share is that many farmers think it would be very complicated and very complex to manage their land if they had more than one uh, uh, tree species in their land. But this is just not true. Like we manage our olive trees harvesting with nets since uh, 30 years, having in between many uh, orange trees and other trees. It's actually very simple. <laughs> Thank you very much, both of you, for your time and all this nice information. 